Hey. The, the first thing I need to make sure of is can you hear me? You probably could hear me without this. Um, I have to tell y'all that I have come home. Do you all realize that I lived in East Tennessee from the time I was five years old? I lived in the big city of Limestone. Do you all know where that big city is? I, gr I grew up in Limestone. I uh, raised my family in Limestone. And seven years ago, I moved to Nashville. Now, so... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so when I come back to this area, I'm like Jim Shulman. I tell everyone I've kind of come home. And um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to choose a, a good nursing home, how to choose an assisted living facility. But let me ask you a question, and I already know the answer. How many of you get up in the morning and say, gee, I can't wait till I go to the assisted living facility or the nursing home? I am so amazed, Raina, no one raised their hand. No, no takers. Would you believe that I've worked in long-term care since I was in my 20s, and I don't get up in the mornings thinking that either? But I'm going to give you, I'm going to give, and let me tell you that if you don't belong in a nursing home, we don't want you to come to the nursing home. We want you in the right place at the right time for the right care. And now we have a continuum of care that has never been available in the history of all of us. And one of the reasons we have that great expanse continuum of care is because of us, and I go, and I look this way, and I look out at y'all, the baby boomers. Why do you think that is? We're living longer, but what have we done historically throughout our in lifetimes from about the 70s on? We raised the bar because we said, Oh, no, you're not. That ain't happening in here. And our, the nursing home that I first started working in in the 70s does not exist anymore. And I want to assure you of that. So, rain to go about... Yeah, so our objectives today is we're going to understand the difference between assisted living facilities and nursing homes, understand who pays for what, the requirements for admission for each one of those facilities, um, how to choose a great facility, and then know what it means to say the right place, the right care, the right time because you don't want to be in any of these continuum of care models unless you have to be. And sometimes we're the greatest place in the world for you to be. We have turned into the experts in long-term care on rehabbing people and setting up people's homes so that you can go back to your house. Does that sound better? So everybody just went, Phew. Because used to, when we thought about going to the nursing home, we thought, we're going to live there for the rest of our lives. They're putting us here to die. That's not true anymore. So I just want to assure you of that. The assisted living facilities that you have in this area, and you have multiple assisted living facilities, but it is a care option for seniors who just need a little bit of assistance in their daily life. It may be... Um, that they just need some help with meals. They've, they've forgotten how to do their own meals or they don't want to do their own meals. They need a little medication help. They maybe just need bathing and help, you know, bathing and dressing help. They have their own apartments. They make their own schedules. They're not in a jail. And everybody there's not the connotation when I say I live in an assisted living facility as there is when it says I live in a nursing home. And all family members really want to say my parent lives in an assisted living facility. However, please understand that assisted living facilities in this state are licensed the same way that nursing homes are licensed. They have certain rules and regulations 
that they have to keep up with and they have to abide by. So at some point, probably, while you're living in assisted living, when the administrator sits down with you or your family member and says, I hate to tell you this, but Mary can't live with us anymore. She's too ill. And you go, oh, no, 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 no. I, she's not going. Yes, it's time for her to go to the next level. No, 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 no. They're not being mean. They're not being hateful. They're trying to keep themselves from getting a lot of deficiencies from the state and getting their doors closed. So they're, they're having to abide by a set of rules and regulations that, that have been made up for years. Uh, they offer a variety of services, and some assisted living facilities do more than other assisted living facilities. Some assisted living facilities have nurses round the clock. Others have nurses eight hours a day. Others have nurses on call. Uh, they usually do three meals a day. They do medication reminders, but if they have the nurses, they can actually administer medications. If they don't, they can't. They're not allowed to by law. Only licensed personnel can actually hand you a medication. Um, they do transportation, and then they help with things like bathing and dressing. But most assisted living facility residents, and I call them residents, they live there, and they can actually maneuver themselves down hallways and into rooms and where they want to be. Some of them actually have cars in the parking lot. We, uh, we just had a thing on the news this week uh, in Nashville that some, a man left the assisted living facility. He had lived in the assisted living facility, left the assisted living facility, went out to his car, got in his car, turned on his car, and they couldn't find him, and they couldn't find him, and they couldn't find him, and they couldn't find him and he was in Missouri when they finally found him and they did it by tracking his credit card. He just forgot how to get home. Um, yes? He was past the time to be moved from this. Either that or it was time to go to a dementia unit in an assisted living. There are units in some assisted livings. All assisted livings don't have them but they have locked units or protected units that, that are specially built for dementia patients, Alzheimer's patients who are wanderers to try to ensure that they stay safe or where you know where they're at. Um, if you are in an assisted living facility, and you need home health care services. Let's say that you need some services, just like if you were in, in your house. If you can rehab in the assisted living facility with home health, Medicare will pay for your home health. However, Medicaid only pays for the services rendered in an assisted living but not your room and board. So if you live in an assisted living facility, there is no government funding in this state to pay for assisted living. So that is a private pay service. Everybody understands that because there's different, that is a payment mechanism. A lot of folks think, well, I can go to assisted living and Medicaid will pay. They will not. Medicare will pay for home health services for you to live in assisted living. So you still have to pay your own room and board charges, just like you would pay your rent. If you have, um, and I'll just tell you, I have a long-term care policy. You think, okay, she's, you know, she's worked in this for all these years and she's had it for years and years. I've had it for two. I have a long-term care policy that will pay assisted living for me to live there because I get to pick and choose. I was really careful about which, which long-term care policy, but they'll, they'll pay for it that way. But only if you have a policy that will pay for those services. 
or allow you to choose the services that get paid for. Now, nursing homes are quite different. Nursing homes mean that you require a level of care that cannot be done in an assisted living facility. You are sicker than what, it re what you can do in an assisted living facility. We have 24-hour nursing care. We have uh, someone on the clock all the time going up and down hallways to help folks. Over my time in long-term care, I tell people all the time, if you have a picture in your brain of little ladies coming, walking down the hall to play bingo, that is not a nursing home. We have moved way beyond that. Now, we actually take care of, in long-term care, in a nursing home, we take care of patients that I used to take care of in ICU. We have folks that are on tube feedings. We have folks that have uh, intravenous therapy, IV therapy. We have dialysis patients. We have ventilator patients. We have folks that really require a high level of nursing services and of nursing care. And in this state, we have a program called Choices where Medicaid determines if you want to apply for Medicaid, you have to get approved medically as well as financially. Because in choices, they want to see if they can help you go other places and get the same type of care. And sometimes that is just physically impossible. So there's two levels of care in long-term care in a, in a nursing home, skill services and intermediate services. Skill services, uh, the patient comes, and now notice that I've changed. We're not talking about residents anymore. We're talking about patients. We're talking about really ill folks. The patient comes to us after a three-day hospital stay. And if you have traditional Medicare, traditional Medicare, after a three-day hospital stay, Medicare will pay for the first 100 days of long-term care services for you, for your rehab in a skilled facility. The first 20 days, they pay at 100%. After the first 20 days, you go into the copayment system. But they're still paying something on your bill as long as you are receiving those skilled services. Once you move past that skill service, you go to another level of care, a lesser level of care. And, but only, just think about this. How many of you know folks that have had fractured hips and they go to a nursing home for a month and then they go home. Do you all see more and more of those residents now? We didn't used to see those residents. Our facilities are experts in doing rehab for a population that is older. If you go to a rehab hospital, there is a certain level of or a certain number of hours a day that you have to have the stamina to keep up with to stay in that rehab hospital. Um, most 80, 90 year old folks cannot take eight hours of therapy a day. They just physically cannot do it. However, they can come to a, a skilled facility with a great physical therapy program, occupational therapy program, speech therapy program, and suddenly in 30 to 60 days, we start see people get better. We start making plans for them to go home. We send our team out to their home and say, hey, what do they need to live here successfully? What can we set up? What can we work with the families or the state agencies to set up in this house to get to help them get home. 
which is a tremendous jump in thinking from where we were 10 years ago. Um, so just because you went to a nursing home does not mean that the world's coming to an end and you're going to die there. Everybody erase that thought. Intermediate care, sometimes, and, and I say this sometimes because less and less people require this level of care. But you heard Jim this morning talk about that his grandmother was 107 years old. And she lived in a nursing home here in Johnson City, um, or close by in Johnson City. I don't guess I'm standing in Johnson City now. But uh, she lived in a nursing home for several years the, at the end of her life. If you think about that, and you're 107 years old, how many of you are physically able, do you think, to keep a 107-year-old round the clock? It is. It is probably one of the hardest tasks, and I do know that some of you in this room are caregivers, and I do know that you have elderly parents living in your house, or elderly aunts, uncles, cousins, etc. But it's probably one of the hardest jobs that God ever made for anybody, because it's like taking care of an infant except every day that you know the infant is getting a little bit older and there's a little tiny light at the end of the tunnel that they're going to grow up and you don't have to wipe their rear ends every day, right? And that's not so true with, an elderly folk, with elderly folks. When you lift a baby, you can do that physically pretty easy. It is harder to do with a grown adult. And there are no babysitter services to help you, give you some respite. Would you think that's true? And one of the most unkind things that I ever heard a church person tell someone in my congregation when I lived up here was that the, the person was, was really, really distraught at church, pouring her heart out, now, I don't know how many of y'all go to church, but church is, you know, this is where we can supposedly pour our hearts out and our friends and our, our church family will take care of us. And they're pouring their heart out and they said, we have to put her in the nursing home. And the church person that was standing beside her, looking at her, said, that is the awfulest thing I have ever heard you say. You promised her you would never do that. That's not kind. That is not an easy decision to make, is it? Any of y'all who've ever had to make it, I've had to make it for my family members. It's not an easy decision. Um, none of us want to do it. None of us. But there comes a point where we may have to do it. And every study that has ever been done on this topic proves that the care of the provider, the person, the health care of the provider declines twice as fast as the person who the care is being given to. So if you have a 90-year-old wife trying to take care of a 90-year-old husband, lifting, tugging, Alzheimer's maybe, getting up all times of the night and day, trying to leave, etc. you will find that both of them start declining rapidly. He, he probably is doing a whole lot better than she's doing. And at some point when they make that decision, that is a hard, hard, hard decision. And if you're one of their friends, don't say you promised them you'd never do that. Put your arms around them and give them a big hug. Um, every nursing home in this state is licensed. It's surveyed by the Tennessee State uh, Department of Health. They have round-the-clock medical care. 
Some facilities offer skill services. There are a few facilities that don't offer any skill services. They only do intermediate care. So you have to check out, okay, what, which, does this one do this? Does this one do this? Because you kind of know what your patient is going to need. Um, a lot of facility choices are made extremely quickly. Let's face it, Jim's going to talk about the extra bucket list, I think, this afternoon. I'll bet you $500 on the bucket list, and I should ask Jim before I said this, because I may have to pay up. <laughs> I may have to pay up. But, but, um, but go pick your nursing home. Now, my daughter tells me all the time, she said, Mama, we've done got your nursing home picked out. And I said, well, let me tell you something, darling. And she said, what? And I said, they're going to call you after the first week and say, we will pay send you a check every month if you'll come and get this loudmouth woman. <laughs> and some of you are laughing because you're going to be right there with me, aren't you? Um, but we no normally we don't know we don't even want to think about that. That is not going to happen to us. That is not going to be where we put our family member. And then a doctor looks across the desk at you and says, I can't help your mom right now. She's got to go to a nursing home. She's got to have therapy. And, and, and you go, okay, how many more days are you going to keep her? And he says, oh, we're discharging her tomorrow to a nursing home. So how fast do you have to make a choice? You're running down to the social worker office and she hands you a list. I think in Washington County there might be 15 nursing homes and I'm thinking off the top of my head. I'm not sure anymore. So they hand you a list and say, here's your choices. And you say, well, which one's the best? Well, it just depends on what you're looking for. And they can't make the decision for you. And they're not supposed to recommend anybody either. Now, now you got about eight hours, right? If you're lucky. <laughs> You've been there, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, do what? Four o'clock, I was told the next morning. Wow. Wow. Well, we're going to talk about really quick how to look, what to look for, how do you find. So, um, number one, ask the hospital discharge planners. Ask the social workers. If your family physician, now, I, and I, please do, I know, I know that the family physician is probably not the person who just told you this because that's not who takes care of you in the hospital anymore. We have hospitalists that take care of us. But ask your family physician, do you have a nursing home you're associated with that you go to that you would recommend? Get on the telephone. Let your fingers do the walking to start out with. Narrow it down. Ask, ask your friends. Now, don't go by hearsay. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Don't go by rumors or anything else. Um, make sure the information you receive is firsthand. And um, there is a website on, on your computer, a website called Nursing Home Compare. And Nursing Home Compare gives a, a quality score to long-term care facilities. It isn't perfect either, but it gives you some place to start. And they graded it kind of like, and, and you think it's like, you know how you do four-star restaurants and five-star restaurants? Well, this one's on stars, too. And so, um, and so people think, well, I'm going into a five-star facility, and you think it's going to be the Ritz-Carlton, and it's not. It has to do with their quality measures, their surveys, their staffing, all kinds of different things. So there's two things you can do without leaving the room if you've got your computer. Okay, but this is the most, this is the most effective. Visit. 
narrow it down really quick because you're not going to have much time as a general rule. You can start right now, though. If you want to, start right now. You know, this can be on Jim's bucket list this afternoon. I'll tell him to add it. Um, start right now. Visit the facilities. That, that's irreplaceable. When I walk out of my car up to your front door, to your front door, and I knock on the door and you open the door for me and say, come in. What kind of impression am I going to get about you? Are you messy or clean? Or, uh, <laughs> he said wonderful. He must know you. <laughs> but that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Number one, maybe you greeted me at the door with a smile. And you said, Linda, I'm glad to see you. Come in here. Your house might be messy, but will I care if you set me down and say, I've got fresh pie made and a cup of coffee? <laughs> Look at me. You know that the answer is that, no, she won't care what it looks like. I don't care what it looks like. In a nursing home, that's not so true, though, is it? You drive in the driveway, and I tell nursing home administrators this all the time, your first impression comes in the driveway. In the driveway. Doesn't it? It does. And if you, if you come up the driveway and the grass is about this tall, and all the flowers are dead, and three of the trees are falling over, are you driving on or are you going in? Driving on. She said she's driving on. Do what? Go to the next door neighbor. Go to the next one on the list, maybe. When you walk through the door, uh, what is your first impression? That's not necessarily what it's going to be, what the ultimate thing is going to be. But kind of in your brain, start thinking through a list. What's my first impression of this facility? What, what hits me when I come up this driveway or when I went through the front door? What type of interaction do you see between the, the patients and the staff? Are they having fun? Are they talking to each other? Does the staff know their names? Is the location close enough for the family and friends to visit? The best nursing home in the world might be in Nashville, Tennessee. But can you visit if you put somebody in Nashville, Tennessee and you live in Johnson City? So most of the time, the consideration, one of the first considerations that folks have is, which ones are closest to me? Because I'm going to be the one that's there every day. Right? And that's one of the things that, that's one of the reasons that we have so many smaller facilities out in our communities, because people want to be in their community. They want to be close to their church family, to their family family, um, does the patient's physician make rounds here? Does the facility appear clean and odor free? There, there are odors, I'm going to tell you, there are odors, they should not linger. That's all I got to say about that. What's the general atmosphere? Can y'all walk down a hallway? When I walk into her home, do I get a general atmosphere of her home or how welcoming she is or what, the, what her home is like just from walking through her front door or being with her for five minutes, ten minutes? Do you get that when you go into a hotel? How long does it take you to know whether you're in a good hotel or not? If you're like me, one trip to the bathroom. Is that about right? If that bathroom's clean and that bed's clean, I can about put up with anything else. But if it's not clean, I just got an impression of the hotel, didn't I? Same thing with the nursing home. Did the staff members know the patients? Are the call lights being answered? Are the call lights going off everywhere and everybody's scrambling and nobody's Nobody's turning off call lights. Uh, visiting hours, are they convenient for you? Most people have 24-hour-a-day visiting hours now. 
the uh, weekly menu appear to be appetizing. There's a weekly menu posted somewhere. Um, if possible, look at a patient tray. Even eat at the facility if they would allow you to eat at the facility. Buy a tray and eat it. Let's see what it tastes like. Some facilities actually have chefs who work in the long-term care facilities. And they are extremely good at fixing some great meals. Some facilities up here, and I know this for a fact, have good old country cooks in their kitchen. And I don't know about y'all, I have a daddy who isn't really interested in French cuisine, but a good bowl of beans and cornbread will do him any day. And it has to be good beans. You know, it's got to have the fat back and the whole kit and caboodle. He doesn't care if it's a chef. He wants a good country cook. He's shaking his head yes. He's agreed. The amen corner's right here. <laughs> uh, look at your activity calendar. There is an activity calendar posted. Does that look like some things that your family member would enjoy doing or that you would enjoy doing? Are there any outside trips scheduled? Do they happen, do the activities happen at different times of the day? Uh, are the residents neat and clean? Do they appear happy? Uh, remember our little video this morning? If they're dancing down the hallways, guys, put them in that day, that minute. <laughs> Does it appear that they have maintained their dignity and self-worth? Does that make any sense to folks? Are they engaged? Are they engaged? If there's a family council, and a lot of facilities have a family council, see if you can talk to somebody on the family council, if they'll give you a name and a phone number. Those people have been there for a while, they have family members in there and they'll tell you what the pitfalls are. And trust me, ain't no place perfect. No place is like home. We are in Oz. Dorothy, there's no place like home. What services are not included in the daily rate? Does the facility accept Medicaid, Medicare, private insurance, or Medicare Advantage? Lots of folks have Medicare Advantage plans now, and it means that they have a private insurance that's paying for their long-term care services. And instead of that traditional Medicare, they have to go through their insurance company to get their Medicare services. And some facilities do not have contracts with the one they have. So you've got to find that out. And then your po the policy on returning advance payments. If you made any advance payments and then you find out they get Medicaid, how long will it be before they hand you back the check? There are patient rights. We all have patient rights. When you go to the hospital, believe it or not, you have patient rights. I bet y'all didn't know that. We live in the South, and in the South, you're supposed to be a good patient and you're not supposed to question anything. Just be a good patient. Be quiet and be good. Or I, that's not true. You can question anything and everything. But you have a set of rights, they have a set of rights. Can you review their patient bill of rights? Um, are religious holidays celebrated? I have probably different, well I know I do, Raina and I have different religious holidays. And, and so do I just do my preferences in the facility or can I do Raina's preferences too? You should do them all. But see the operative word in that sentence was should. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. Now let me tell you some stuff that you can't expect. And I'm just going to tell you the pitfalls right now. You don't get one-on-one -on -one care in long-term care, whether it's assisted living or a nursing home. One-on-one -on -one care does not exist unless you're willing to come and stay 24-7. And if you're going to do that, you might as well take them home, right? Um, if a patient has a history of falls at home, guess what? 
they're going to fall at the nursing home. Yes, we'll be working on rehab, and yes, we'll be working on balance issues, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to fall. I've had family members tell me they've fallen 33 times this month, and if they fall in this facility, just expect a lawsuit tomorrow. And I'm going, you, just, you need to take them on because they're going to fall. Whatever it is that's causing them to fall will cause them to fall no matter where they're at. I tell this story all the time. My mother died of lung cancer. And the last night that my mother was alive, my mother was in the bed and she kept trying to get up. And she could not physically get up by herself. And I said, Mama, you have to, you have to stay in the bed. And if you need help, you have to ask me to help you. And she, and, and I mean, I'm up all night long. And she finally, about 2 o'clock, she said, lay down here in the bed with me. I said, just lay down beside me, and I won't get up. So I laid down beside her, and I had my arm across her. So she wouldn't get up. So get up and if she started to move, who was going to feel it? And guys, I'm a registered nurse. Of course you know what happened. She got, out of she got out of bed. She fell out of bed under my arm with me screaming coming across the bed. But guess what? I couldn't stop her. So it's, if it's going to happen, it can happen. Uh, if they wander at home, they're going to wander in the facility. And some people say, I don't want them on that locked unit. I don't want this for them. I, we're all trying. Every nursing home in this state is on a mission from God to not put restraints on residents. Not put restraints on residents. That means that if they wander at home, they're going to wander in the nursing home. They're going to be in and out of rooms that aren't their rooms. They may pick up things that aren't their things. And we have units that are specially made for that, but just know that. And so if something is missing from your mother's room, just tell the staff. We'll go looking for it because we'll say, you know, we just saw Mary come out of there about an hour ago. And guess what? It's in Mary's room. She thought you had her sweater. Um, if there's issues to resolve, talk to the social worker, the director of nursing, the administrator. If there's a grievance form, fill it out and hand it to them. If that doesn't work, call your ombudsman. You have a Johnson City ombudsman, but she'll be the mediator. She will call them and, and be the mediator for you. But the one thing that you don't want to do, you don't want to go out in the community and say all this stuff is happening and the staff doesn't know that you're dissatisfied or that something's happened. As an administrator, if I don't know about it, I can't fix it. Um, but right now, we're talking about a continuum of care over time. A continuum of care that includes so many health care providers that can give you services based on your needs for an extended period of time or for a very short period of time. And we are, assisted living and health care, long-term care, is part of that continuum. We work with hospitals now. We sit at the same table with hospitals trying to figure out how not to send you back to the hospital. We all are trying to work together on that continuum of care. We work with hospice. We work with home health. We, we do not want you to be with us unless you have to be with us. And always, always, always remember, seek the right care at the right time at the right place. Now, we have four minutes for questions. And I talk so fast. <laughs> That's really fast for a Southern girl, you know it? So is he, yes. Yes, 
And I'll tell you what, it's on the CMS website. The CMS website, it is actually included in the re rules and regulations for long-term care facilities. CMS is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, a federal, federal um, program. Okay. Most facilities, if, if, you, if you are a danger to yourself or others, we cannot admit you to long-term care unless we are specializing in behavioral issues. And some facilities do. And they are few and far between sometimes, but they do. But if you are a danger to other people, that takes them out of the nursing home game and the assisted living game because the rights of the one do not supersede the needs of the many. Does that sound like a Star Trek commercial? <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. We had we, my mother and I, have done all the visits. She knows where she wants to go when it's that time. They have a wait list. I have tried to convince her. Let's talk to them about getting you on the wait list. If you're not ready when your slot comes open, they bump down. Is that something that an adult child should just go ahead and just do, do it. it? Just do it. They don't ever have to know. They'll call you. Okay. Say, no, she's not ready yet. Long-term long care insurance. Long-term care insurance. Mm. There are several companies that sell long-term care insurance. We had an quote unquote expert in Nashville. I'm not sure if there's anything about long-term care insurance in our book or not. Um, I will give you my card if you would like. I'll give you my card and if you'll contact me or email me, I'll put you in contact with some folks if you'd like. Okay? Yes. The Alzheimer's Association. Yeah, I went to the uh, Health and Human Services. They don't do that anymore. They gave me a brochure with an 800 number. I called it. They don't really take your phone call. They call you back in the order that it was received. They called me back four days later. I missed the call. So I called them back. back Two home. days later, they called me. I just saw Laura go like this. She wants this question. I am housed in the Tennessee Commission on Aging Disability, and we are sort of a clearinghouse for information related to aging issues and would be happy to take your call and then send you out to the appropriate resources or help you in house if we can if we can help. And I have cards up here as well. Um, if you want to come well, I'm just clueless as yeah. to who called. That's that's kind of what I we seem do. To so. have been getting, we don't do that. We don't do that. It's either. called the Royal Runaround. I said, I know where your office is. I can come by. Well, we do it yeah, yeah. There's people out here that are here today. There, there are people out here. And also, um, even if you know, we are based in Nashville, however, we operate nine different area agencies on aging and disability who will be able to help you in your local area. So we can get you connected. To we can get you hooked up today. I work for my, I'm a community service representative with a non-mental health insurance agency, but in my role as community service, it doesn't really have anything to do with my agency, and we do specialize in Alzheimer's disease and dementia care. I had a 13-year career with a Alzheimer's organization, so I would be more than happy on that. Great. Does she have a card also? <laughs> yeah, she's going to be passing them out in just a moment. Yes, do you have a question? No, he just scratching his back. Any other questions, comments? Thank you so much for having us today. This is a great thing. You have another question. You're saying choose your place before. Yes. Well, how do you know? Because you don't know exactly what's going to be wrong with you. No, but you can start looking. You can make an assumption. I'm going to make an assumption 
because I did it the other day. No, I did it the other day. I fell down and I have ripped a tendon in my shoulder. I fell down fishing. The fish pulled you over. It was that big. I want to tell you that that's the truth, but that's not the truth. I fell on the dock and I've ripped a tendon in my shoulder. So I'm, and, and, I am the perfect model for osteoporosis. So I think what's going to happen to me is a fractured hip. I'm going to need a skilled facility with skilled services for physical therapy. I've already figured that part out. <coughs> or find one that just does it all. Okay. That would be the, probably my best bet. Yeah. Anybody that does skilled services usually has a really good rehab program. Anything else? Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.